There's many ways to look at it. I choose to look at it this way. You always want to be prepared for the success and not just work for the success because not being prepared when you receive the success can be a total disaster. At that age, I don't think I was prepared for a level of success that I'm, I'm receiving right now. And so I would say I'm where I'm supposed to be. Between the Grooves is hosted by James Curtis, music director and morning man in the greater Toronto area on Joy Radio. And Aisha Woods, Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and musician. Together, they talk with artists and industry insiders to discover our connection between music and faith. You can connect with us on Facebook or X at Between Grooves and on Instagram at Between Grooves Pod. Now, here's James and Aisha. Hello, family. Welcome to Between the Grooves with myself, Aisha Woods, and my man, James Curtis. Hey, James, how are you? I'm doing good. I like the way you said family. Oh, yeah. Shock. Listen, we're all one big family, aren't we? That's right. We're all in this together, and we love hearing your feedback and your comments and questions, and uh, it's great to be back. Our guest today has been in the news. Um, This is a recent winner at the Juno Awards. Juno Awards, very similar to the Grammy Awards, except it's for Canadian artists. It happened in Halifax, Nova Scotia, uh, just recently, and uh, he walked away with the Christian Gospel Album of the Year. There is really only one. There's only one award in the Christian Gospel category, and he walked away with that award. He was also... Uh, a winner at the Covenant Awards last November. Um, been a big year for him. It's been a big year, but he's he's a well-established artist. He's been around. Um, he knows his stuff. He's a musician. He's a songwriter. And uh, I, I guess this is our opportunity to get to know him a bit better. Nice. I want to pick his brain about some things. Sounds good. Well, let's get to it. Kay Anthony on Between the Grooves. That's really weird. It's just uh... The gremlins of audio, you know? <laughs> well, anyways, let's uh, let's have a conversation. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Kay Anthony, let's talk about your, well, I guess, first of all, a belated congratulations on your recent Juno win. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I mean, the uh, my first question is your first reaction. Ah, I was shocked because, you know, there's a lot of talented artists who I was familiar with. We have met um, for a previous award, uh, Jimmy Covenant Award. So I'm yeah, that was back in November. That's correct. And so I know that they are tremendously talented. And so when my name was announced, I was so shocked. I was first asked if at the table I was seated, um, if I prepare a speech just in case I won. And I said, no. Um, <laughs> <but> I <laughs> I have some stuff that I would like to see that's in my head because I didn't want to hype myself up to say like there's a surety that I was going to win. Sure. And then I didn't because for an artistic person, that can affect you. So I just came there enjoying the moment, taking my time to just let it marinate uh, right. the whole experience because the first time I was nominated for a Juno Award, it was 21 and then it was a COVID. So it was the first time I was able to meet so many people um, in the industry, and so I was just ex- taking the ex- taking the ride, and um, so my name was called. I was shocked. I, I, I was elated, and I'm truly grateful and honored. I'm I'm like you. I don't prepare speeches, right? <laughs> because I think it's kind of like like I'll have it in my head, like you say. You you kind of you know if I were to win, this is you know some of the things I touch yeah. on and say. But I, <laughs> yeah. I I think it's presumptuous to to Correct. prepare something and then you know you prepare the speech and then you don't use it because you didn't win it's like well you know i did all that work for nothing you know my time yeah. is worth something you know <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> i think the one thing that uh, i can attest to as far as you know taking a step back to the uh, gma covenant awards back in november um the one thing that was pretty awesome that's always been awesome about the covenant awards is the networking meeting people that maybe you've known online you follow online you've chatted with online but never having that face-to-face contact to me that's the biggest thing at the covenant awards did you find it to be similar at the at the juno awards yes um just i would say on a larger scale um 
I was able to connect with different persons within the industry. Um, and so that for me was a great moment. You know, I've also met persons online from who are in different genres or work in different areas of the industry. And so to come to that central place and be able to converse and talk, that was good. And That's so neat. Yeah. Did anything materialize from all of that? Obviously, you know, if you're able to yeah. network and meet contacts, is there something in the pipe for down the future? Yes. there. I've had some discussion with publishers, um, persons who are producers. Uh, I had a good chat with the SoCan team. So that was awesome. Wow, that's cool. You mentioned that you're uh, in grad school. What are you in grad school for now? I'm currently pursuing a master's in divinity. All right. That's great. Yeah. It's an interesting journey. I'm in my second year. Just completed, okay. this, just completed this semester, uh, which went pretty well. Um, we'll be doing the first part of the summer session. Then I'll be doing some. I should be at 100 Huntley in June. And then I have some performances throughout Canada and outside. Um, so it's, 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 it's going to be an interesting rest of the year. Would you pursue something beyond just the masters? Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Dr. Um, Anthony, Dr. Anthony. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> you know, because right now it's K. Anthony, and you're right, Aisha, it could change to Dr. Anthony. That would be, you know, you'd have to change your, you know, persona, I suppose, a little bit too, right? <laughs> uh, I, I, for me, I would always be the same. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, the studies that you're doing, is that – related to music or is it related to uh, getting into some kind of other field or other other uh, career it's ministry overall i think it only brought, only broadened my scope and um, allow me to be able to think a little bit deeper in terms of songwriting and um just spreading the message of hope and, and the message I, that i strongly believe in of jesus christ and uh, what he has done for me and how he can uh, in using me how he can impact the world and what about teaching would you ever get into that Interestingly, I was a teacher before. Oh, what did I get into teaching? Nice. You know, u- university <laughs> level teaching. Obviously, if, if you pursue masters and beyond, that that qualifies you, or or there's a better chance for you to to get into that I, realm of teaching. I think so. It's always good in giving back and also nurturing uh, the the talents now and um, preparing them to have a greater impact. So I definitely would do that. Well, giving back. I don't know. It's there's good money in it. I would be doing it for the money. <laughs> really? Really, James? <laughs> I, I, my understanding is there's good money if you've got a master's or a bachelor of, of whatever yeah. and you go teaching at a college or university to the level, uh, that you can make some really good money. Yeah, certainly. So, it's for the money, but for me, um, it has to be more than the money yeah. or else I'm not going to be totally um, happy. And so if right, I'm going right. back into teaching, interestingly, you said something a while ago about, about um, tertiary t- teaching. So when I left college, my first job was actually teaching at the same college as an adjunct instructor, although I nice. didn't have a master. So immediately out of school, because they thought I was capable, I was teaching music literature. Um, or some, co- um, some colleges call it music appreciation. Um, and so I've experienced that for six years uh, and also taught at the high school level before migrating to Canada. So I've had some experience. I was very young, but it gave uh-huh. me an understanding of how to deal with people, being placed in position, how to manage that, and not because persons are older than you that I'm actually teaching, uh, I treat them less or anything like that. So it was a great opportunity and a great experience. Yeah, that would be a great experience. I I, uh, I didn't think you could do that straight out of college. I mean, I've I've certainly tried, but maybe I'm just not the right material. <laughs> <laughs> what were you teaching at the high school level? I was teaching music also. So I was oh, teaching okay, music, okay. Responsible, responsible for their choir. And um, for the college, I was doing, at, at their extension campus, I was teaching music literature as an adjunct instructor. Just teaching the course because I'm capable of, uh, I'm a specialist in the area, so I'm able to teach that sure. course. Gotcha. Nice. Especially given the experience that you have in the industry, too. Yes. And funny enough, at that time, I didn't have the, the, the amount of 
um, experience that I have now, I was establishing myself. I got signed pretty young back home. I probably got signed when I was 18, 19. And um, that didn't go so well. And so what that that taught me how to under, to, to navigate the business aspect of music. Um, so all is, all wasn't lost. When Sometimes when things doesn't work out, we tend to look at the, the negative of it entirely. I learned early to look at the positive that I could take away from it that will enhance me as a person and persons who I come in contact with to teach them the do's and the don'ts of the business. Sure, sure. And, um, yeah. I think that's the best way to learn is, is, uh, is find out the hard way versus, you know, some textbook example of what right. to do or not to do and, and stuff. Sometimes yeah. the, the, uh, school of uh, hard knocks is the way to go. My goodness. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely, it's 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 hard because uh, during that time I actually cried for a year because um, I had great plans, put things in place. My 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 parents had supported me and funded a lot of what I was doing. But then it's still, as you said, unfortunately, is the best way to learn because you'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, but given all that experience, are are you where you think you should be career wise? Um. Hmm. There's many ways to look at it. I choose to look at it this way. Um, you always want to be prepared for the success and not just work for the success because not being prepared when you receive the success can be a total disaster. At that age, I don't think I was prepared for a level of success that I'm, I'm re- receiving right now. And so I would say I'm where I'm supposed to be. It's a possibility. I I, I have delayed some of it. Um, but I think I'm where I'm supposed to be. And um, I'm just grateful and I'm just taking the time to use uh, the platform that I've been given to the best of my ability. You, uh, I understand, have been uh, doing some collaborations. And I got to say, like, you've got a new new song called Back to Jesus. And I'm really curious as to how this odd group came together. Is that, is that the right <laughs> word, the odd group? Because I would never have thought the three of you would get together. And and by the three people, I'm talking about yourself, Alicia Ike, and yeah. Lloyd Nix. I mean, that's Lloyd just an odd Nicks. group. How did that ever happen? So crazily, um, I'm, I met Lloyd probably four years ago on Instagram. And... Uh, the conversation was not just music. We, I quickly became his big brother. And, um, mm. It took us some time to actually meet in person. But when we met, it felt so organic. It's, it was amazing. And so yeah. he had invited me and gave me pretty much one of my biggest opportunities to perform at a mega church in Missouri. And, um, and also being a part of a writing camp that he had put on with some persons in the industry. Um, it was a beautiful moment, and we just continued working together. If I, if he, if he needed help in terms of guidance, in terms of navigating certain things, he would contact me, and I would share the knowledge that I have. Um, and then I met Alicia sometime, I think uh, last year or the year before. I think is yeah, I think probably two years ago, and. Um, we were talking and then we finally said, hey, probably we should work on something. And we started working on this song a year ago. And um, while we were writing, I, I was bogged down with schoolwork and I wasn't thinking how I would want to. And so I said to her, I have a good friend. He's, like, he's my brother. And I would like to bring him, just ask him some, for some ideas of what he thought about this part of the song. And I did. He gave some pointers of what he thinks. And um, I... I, I after that, I just invited him to say, hey, I think you should be a part of the whole ride. And we completed the song. And it took us some time to really navigate. And then we, Alicia had her, her brother, Tim, do the production. And then Josh in Nashville got the mix done. We only got that done some months ago. And so we decided to release it um, just now. And so it's a beautiful record. Um, Love it. Encourage, encouraging people to go back, return, to, go back to Jesus have the it's three so of you now? Yeah, have the mm. have the three of you ever gotten together in person, or was this all done online? 
all done online. Um, I traveled to Missouri and um, was in the studio. Lord called me and, and said, hey, can I come over and cut my part? I said, for sure. Uh, we did it. To, he did his part. I did my part. We sent it over to Alicia. Um, she did her part. And then we all put it together. And she's based where? She's in the, I don't, I hope I'm not mistaken. I know she's in the Ontario area. Uh, Ontario, Canada. Think, I'm not sure exactly I, where. We've had I her. If it's Kissim, it, I don't remember if it's not, it's, um, ah, what's the name of it? Ah, the name is slipping me. I don't want to lie. We've mm. we've had her but on the Canadian. podcast a while back. She is, oh yeah, yeah. Gotcha. she's okay. she's very talented, okay. and I, I was just really surprised at the collaboration. It was just like a, a an odd group of people coming together to write a song, and that's why I was that's really so curious neat. about that. Yeah, but it's interesting how things come together like that, right? And sure part enough. of that is like you were talking earlier about the you know the networking and meeting people in the industry and stuff, and sometimes yeah. that's how these things happen, right? Yes, these the, the, the internet can create beautiful moments, and I think that moment was a beautiful moment for for, for us who are from different background, um, different location at the time, and just coming together and making something beautiful. Have you done a lot of collaborations like that in the past? Not quite. I've done some collaboration, but not 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 quite like this. Um, mm. But we have decided that we'll do some more work together. We are all busy. Lloyd is busy with his project at this time. And um, Lloyd is big on songwriting also. Uh, a well-known song that you guys would have known by CC was he's a main writer in that song. Mm -hmm. we, Which we, one? We, we, we declare, declare the glory. Give him all the praises. That's my key. Oh, yes, yes. He's yes. a big songwriter, a major part of that song. And so he's phenomenal. And uh, that's a great, great song. It is. I love it. Yeah, that's a that's a great song for cranking up. I didn't realize he was a co-writer on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Aisha, what if I told you uh, we're going to have Lloyd Nix on the podcast in a few weeks from now? That would be awesome. Yeah. And I'd, I'd have to uh, let him in on the... Three times that we've attempted to do that song in our services uh, in the last few months. <laughs> when you say attempted, is it is it just falling apart or what happened? Yes. <laughs> the so the first time uh, something happened with the uh, with the lyrics on our confidence monitor, and it was. I was like, okay, we're going to do this song. This is brand new. When I tell you I started making up lyrics on the fly, I oh, was no. just like, <laughs> clearly they were not the lyrics, <laughs> but I, I wasn't that familiar with the song. Right. And, um, and actually I, I take that back. It was, it's only been two, two times. We've, we've attempted it twice. So I'm like, mm -hmm. Maybe we need to wait for uh, Lloyd or wait for Cece to do it. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Come to your church and do it. Then then you're yes. set. Yeah. Or have Call Kay Anthony himself. come and do it. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Anthony, Anthony, do you do you lead worship in your church? Hardly. Hardly? Um, yeah, hardly. Hardly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know. I grew up doing, focusing on songwriting and recording and performing, but not necessarily leading worship. Really, I've, gotcha. I've ever led worship. Um, I'm hopeful, hopefully, I can hone the skill a little bit more because it takes mm -hmm. a it takes a certain level of skill to do that. Sure. Do you play instruments? Yeah, but I don't necessarily focus on them. I, as a music major, my uh, voice. Voice was my emphasis, but I did piano and guitar. So I use it on okay. violin. I did them mostly for writing purposes. I'm yes. really passionate about songwriting and recording. You're uh, obviously on stage a lot. And uh, one, yeah. of, one of my beefs, I've said this to Aisha in the past, is one of my beefs is... <laughs> He's is, got beef. He's got beef. Bro. I, I got a lot of beefs, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you should see the complaints mm. we get. No, uh, mm. the, <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> when you're on stage, I mean... I, I have a problem when it's somebody leading worship and almost calling it a worship concert because I don't think the two words uh, work together. Um, or 
or a worship artist um, talking about one of their recent shows. And I use shows in quotes because, again, mm -hmm. is it a show mm -hmm. or is it a time of worship? And so yeah. when you hit the stage, obviously, if you're not a worship leader, this would be a show, not a worship time. So for me, when I hit the stage, it's time for me to present what God has given to me and to have a uh, intimate uh, moment with God before the people with them. So I don't look at it as performance or a show. Mm -hmm. But I didn't grow up. I didn't. I grew up singing in church, and I think that's different from leading worship in church. Sure, but, sure. But I'm a worshiper. In when I'm, from once I go on the stage. I am there to bring the message of Jesus Christ. So mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a worshiper, but I know people will. The job in a church is to go and set the atmosphere. I've never been hired by a church to do that, and um, the church that I attend actually have persons who actually do that. Very rarely right. they will say, "Hey," because they know who I am. They will say, "Hey, um, can you lead the song or can you sing with us?" Mm -hmm. And I will. But I, I don't believe because I'm a recording artist, I should be the centerpiece. You have right, tremendous right. talent around me. And so I think it can be unfair if because they know what I'm doing and who I am to, to push me all the time at the front and neglect right. the other persons from being able to develop. But as a worship artist on stage, um, are you, uh, are, are people participating or are they watching? Uh, so... <laughs> I try to get the people to be very much involved because mm -hmm. we are worshiping together. Um, a show is definitely used somewhat. It can be, it can vary. You, I can literally stand before you and sing a song and we are worshiping, wor worshiping together. But mm -hmm. I try to get, how I generally do my set is I will start with an up-tempered song that gets people very much involved that they have to sing back. And, um, then I set the tone, then I taper off with songs like Free and I see it all very calm, very focused to the message. And uh, uh -huh. sometimes I'll, I will talk to them because I don't take it for granted that there's someone there possibly hurting, there's someone there possibly going through depression, someone there battling things that they need uh, support with. And so I believe sure. God has given me the platform to be that voice and to be the person to encourage them and remind them that God loves them and he's there for them. Right. Do you do songs I, that um, people are familiar with? Like when I say familiar with, do you do covers? Um, like I congregational? Don't, I, I don't I hardly. Why? Because I have songs like, for example, God, I have a song titled God is Good. It's very, a very involved song. Um, mm -hmm. A song called Billboard for Christ. I can have you sing that in within a second. And I set this as a marker for myself that I would, I would step away from when I was very young from singing a lot of other writers' song because I needed mm -hmm. to establish myself and the way they went about establishing that song was to sing it so other people get to love it and fall in love with it. So I do that rarely. I will do it a little, but not as much as some other persons might. Right. Sure. And I'm, I, I want to throw in um, just with what you were saying, James, a few minutes ago about the performance aspect. I do believe that whether you are a worship leader or um, or worship artist or um, an artist that sings Christian music, in your artistry, there is a performance aspect yeah. that mm -hmm. is, it's got to be there. Um, yes. To a certain extent, because mm -hmm. it's part of what God has given you to engage the people. If you're Correct. not able to co connect with them, there's something about um, when when people feel like they can connect with you and that's part of the performance aspect, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And leading people in worship and you have songs that are congregational, of course, and some of those songs are 
vertical. You know, they're they're directly to the Father. They're they're worshiping mm-hmm. God. They're praising mm-hmm. God. And then you have other songs that are songs of ministry, songs that you are you are giving the message. You know, mm-hmm. and you're you're encouraging people. You're telling them how you came through or how someone else came through. And so those songs are going out to them. You're ministering to them. So again, there's that performance aspect that's there, um, no matter where you are on the spectrum, um, in ministry and on stage and in Mm -hmm. music. But Aisha, the, the, performance element i mean is that more would you describe that more as an excellence in musicianship and and your vocals versus performance being defined as a show uh i think it's a little bit of both to tell you the truth because there are there are people that Honestly, if they stood up on a stage, even though they have a great message, you're not going to be as inclined or as open to listen to them if they do not have a certain level of community, if that's mm-hmm. even a word, you know? And I think that a lot of that has to do with your method. And how you engage the the audience. And that's all a part of performance. Not everybody can get up and lead people, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I, under, I understand where you're coming from, Aisha. Um, to, to look at it from your perspective, K. Anthony, the, when you're doing a show, uh, obviously you want the people attending to participate and so you'll do some easy songs to loosen them up a bit maybe um yeah. are you doing anything with lighting or you know any of the you know the 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 non-music stuff mm. some uh, that have happened before um where because of the song that i was about to sing they dim the light mm-hmm. creating a certain ambience a certain feel and, right. and, and that is a part of the art because they are creating, creating an atmosphere that that would help the message to be lifted even more. Yeah, uh, so that people can focus a little bit more, not so much on on me necessarily. Um, and I like that it's a it, it, it's an art, and so because not because it's an art, it means it's not worship. It's mm-hmm, an art. Mm-hmm. To be, it's an art to be to master. There's a point in time my stage presence was good, and the person who, I, who was my guide at the time would show me how to manage and how to work the stage because that's important. It's almost yes. like a person who is a pastor or a public speaker not understanding their voice fully, but they need to master the intonation and when to get loud, how sure, to sure. allow the the, the the edginess of the voice. Um, the breathing, um, it's just to master the art of it, um, mm-hmm. which only can enhance if, if done correctly. And if, uh, if you're allowing God to lead, can only allow the presentation and that worship to be better. Okay. So I love that. Where, where do we, where does, where do lasers and strobes and fog <laughs> and smoke machines, yeah, yeah. like, Where's that all fitting? Because you know there's churches that do that too, right? So it's one that's I'm just trying to draw a parallel yeah, yeah. between what you do in a show versus uh, a time of worship in a church. You know, I mean obviously they they think it's needed. I guess if I'm singing I guess if I'm singing I'm, that I'm in the clouds, I want some smoke that I'm drinking. Have you have you done it in your show? Any of that stuff? Never done that before. No. I think some of it can be a bit dramatic. And um, I don't, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like to bother on being dramatic. You can be um, artistic, but I think some of it can go over the edge for me. And um, some of it, I don't, <laughs> obviously, don't participate in. 
Uh, I like to be, uh, to be honest with you, I like it to be simple. Yeah. Um, yes. You have lighting, you can be simple lighting. Because I don't want to take away from God's moment, God's right. voice and what he has to share. So all of this flickery and all of this spotlight, I don't necessarily right, right. Um, focus on that and I'm not interested. I mean, if they have that there, uh, uh I don't know. Then so be it, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, so you, be you it. Make but it I'm, work. Not, I'm not asking for it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah ask it's not in your rider. Yeah. <laughs> nah. I need this light and I need I need the yeah. blue light to shine at yeah. this moment. And I need the I need the smoke nah. and the fog to come when I say but that yeah. almost becomes happy, so happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that could that could very almost be a crutch to rely on all that stuff too. Because what would you do without Golly. it? You know, uh, I know. Honestly, I think it's a little. It teeters on idolatry, to tell you the truth. I think, and that's what I wanted to say. I think so. It's like what for me, it's God's moment. I'm being right. so upfront with you. For me, it's God's moment to speak, and I'm open and I'm praying that He uses me to speak. Right, right. It just makes me think of where in the word, the Bible says that God will not share his glory with any man. And when we start to glorify self, it's like we we just tell God, have a nice day. This is all about me now. And honestly, I think in the now um, and it probably has always been this way but now more so than ever you see a lot of self glorification it's this narcissistic me 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 what can you do for me God you know what I mean it's not it's, only that it's it's the uh, how many people, and this isn't just musical artists, it's it's almost, a, well, not almost everyone, but a lot of people online just love themselves to the extent that they post a picture of themselves all the time. It drives me nuts, Gosh. you know? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I... I I, I, there's what there's one person I've seen do it a lot, and and it's like another one. And every time I see it, it's it's like okay, I'm not going to post a picture of myself now because I don't want to be like that guy, right, you know. Right. But I wanted to ask you, Kay Anthony, because I know you don't post pictures of yourself and are are in love with yourself like some of these other people. <laughs> but as an artist, and and given what Aisha just uh, said about you know giving God all the glory and being the the focus being on God. How do you, after a show, handle compliments when people come up to you and say, wow, that was amazing? Yeah, the journey that God have allowed me to be on and experience, I think, has caused me and molded me to not to focus on myself. And I mm-hmm. genuinely have people, I, I surround myself with people who will quickly deflate Yes, yes. Oh. De- deflate me if I that's, think I'm... That's my wife. That's my <laughs> wife. <laughs> Every day, let me tell you. My wife, yeah. Yeah, that will quickly... I have kids, so they will quickly... If I sang a note that they think it... They think it wasn't the right note because they know the song are it. Yeah. Well, they will quickly, you know, deflate the, that balloon. So um, <laughs> I think it's just a matter of understanding what God has called you to. And... um when you see it coming because people will people will lord you enough to where it becomes a a, a bad thing for you and so it's for mm-hmm. me to focus on and be reminded that it is god that has done this this what they're trying to do to me well they're probably not even thinking about it, it belongs to god no form i am not sure. i cannot take no form of worship Right. At all, I'm a simply sinner saved by His grace, and so yes, I can't, I can't for a moment even think like that. And, um, and people can commend kids. you <laughs> for you to feel good, but I also think about it a lot to say, "Hey, uh, don't allow this to happen to you." And um, I have a real good friend, my best friend in Canada. He is the person who will, he's a doctor, uh, upstate. And he will quickly, you know, bring it back down to the level, which <laughs> I need, I, I, he's my accountability partner when it comes to my my life overall and making sure that I'm walking the street and the narrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
It's important to have those people in your it's life. It's very important yeah. you have those people. Good gracious. I've, I've got three in my kids. life. Yeah. <laughs> I got my wife and two kids. My wife, my wife puts me in my place right away. She doesn't care what I do for so a living. Funny. She she uh-huh. honestly does not care. And then, and then my kids. I mean, every day I'll I'll you know come home from work and hey, so did you did you uh, enjoy my show this morning? And and they just they just look at me blankly and say, yeah, we don't listen to your show. Like, well, that's all I do. That's all I do. <laughs> yeah, my wife is that. My wife is wife like is that. that for you? Oh yeah, I'm at my kids. I have three kids, Nia, Noah, and Nyla. They are, they are sharp, you know. So yes, yeah. I, I can't I play that game. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's the game. That's right, because you want to feel good about yourself. I know. I know. I know. I know. We're human. Let me tell you. Oh yeah. yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> my twelve-year-old just on uh, on Sunday gone. He was like, "Mommy, what happened on that first song?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you 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 heard it. You know what happened. <laughs> exactly. Well, that also <laughs> shows the talent, though, eh? To be able to pick uh-huh. up on something like yeah. that, because many people, as a, as a as an artist or as a, as a musician, um, you can you can sometimes hide stuff. Oh, and, sure. and most people, especially yes. in a church setting, most people wouldn't pick up on it. But right. if you've got any kind of talent behind you, they would, right? Oh, sure. my son is crazy with that. Oh. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, he's the one will call me out like saying, "Listen, what do you sing there?" <laughs> <laughs> How old is he? He's nine. Oh wow! Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, That's awesome. Good. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, Anthony, thank you so much for hanging with us. Really appreciate it. Uh, glad everything was able to come together. I just want to tell you guys, um, just thank you for having me, and um, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for playing the music and bringing it to the people. Um, you guys have blessed my heart, and I appreciate you guys. Thank oh, you so much. Gosh. Appreciate it. We would love to stay connected, okay? For sure, definitely. Have a wonderful day. You too. Take you care. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was a fun conversation. K. Anthony on Between the Grooves. You can check okay. out his website, kanthonylive.com. See what he's up to. Yes. And uh, look forward to uh, getting together with you again next week. Yes, indeed. We love y'all. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Faith Strong Today's Between the Grooves podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, would you consider sharing it with your friends, rating our podcast, or giving us some love on your socials to your amazing friends and followers will only help us reach more people. We'd also love to hear from you and share your feedback in an upcoming episode. Send your video or written message to Aisha and James on Facebook or X at Between Grooves and on Instagram at Between Grooves Pod. Or email us anytime, hello at Faith strong today.com.